and we just record so anybody who has tickets misses it, they can catch up tomorrow. All right, welcome to Virtual Bourbon. It's a Try It series. And tonight we have our special guest, Hannah Thomas. She is the VP of Wholesale and Marketing from 291 Colorado Whiskey. And we're going to sample their whole lineup tonight. So hey. welcome, Hannah. Thanks. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to walk you through the lineup and uh, get some 291 lovers out there. Yeah. So I've been lucky enough to talk to you before, um, and I've had a blast, but introduce yourself a little bit to our audience and tell them about what you do at 291. Sure. Um, I am the VP of Wholesale Sales and Marketing, and frankly, I don't really know exactly what that title means because uh, <laughs> we all wear a lot of hats being an emerging brand out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. So I found 291 by way of uh, being really great friends with Michael Myers, the CEO and founding distiller. Um, I used to work for a large distribution company here in Colorado, well, there in Colorado, but for, um, you know, large suppliers. And, and in that, I found my love for, uh, for wine, for champagne, and uh, most of all, whiskey. And so, you know, COVID had other plans for me when it came to career-wise. And uh, I called my friends at 291, and I was like, hey, I want to start selling some whiskey. What do you guys think? And uh, they didn't know I was looking. And so I, I joined their team um, in January to to kind of, you know, spread the 291 good word. So it's amazing. It's been an awesome experience so far. And you know, I feel like it's, I've met this much of all the amazing people I'm going to meet here in the future. So I'm excited to be more, you know, on the road and active. So it's awesome. Right. Awesome. Tell us a little bit about Michael Myers and what it's like working with him and the rest of the team there. Sure. Michael is phenomenal. He is, uh, you know, the rest of the team, we are an extension of Michael, if you will. And you know, for those that are unfamiliar with Michael's story, he is a former fashion and beauty photographer. He, uh, you know, did did work for Vogue, for Allure magazine. He photographed Angelina Jolie when she was 16, the Olsen twins. I mean, his experience is vast. And, you know, he uh, went to SCAD um, in Savannah, Georgia for uh, photography. And, um, you know, from then on pursued this amazing, amazing career and made it, you know, his full-time job. And so he was based in New York, um, doing a lot of photography gigs and things like that. And then um, September 11th, 2001 had a very, very massive impact on us all. And it also had a very massive impact on Michael Myers. He um, was walking his eldest son to school on the day of September 11th when the first plane made contact with the first tower. And they were actually, you know, outside and lots of panic ensued and, and didn't really know, didn't know what to do at that point. And so, you know, in that moment, I think he had that epiphany of, you know, it's, it's not a place for my family anymore. So he relocated to Colorado Springs where his in-laws were and would commute back and forth, um, you know, doing his, his photography career and having two young boys and a wife at home. He was like, I gotta be there more and didn't know quite how to do that until one flight um, from New York back to Colorado Springs, he was reviewing an in-flight magazine. And in that he saw the branding for Hendrix Gin and Sailor Jerry Rum and was like, you know what? I've been taking pictures of people. I worked in the magazine industry. I know what it takes. I'm going to start branding for, uh, you know, doing branding photography and, and working in marketing for um, liquor. And he came back to the Springs where he had industry friends and Mike Bristol of Bristol Brewing, um, a really good friend of his. He, you know, consulted with him and was like, I should, I should do branding, right? And he's like, no, 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 Michael, if you're going to do branding, you should probably start making it yourself. Uh, <laughs> and, and not knowing Michael's background, uh, you know, Michael came from, you know, home cooking and has a really great eye, obviously, for top, for photography, but also does really great things in the kitchen as well, being a home mm -hmm. cook. Um, so it was, you know, uh, he's like, yeah, I guess I could try that, maybe. Um, Michael, in his photography career, used a technique called photogravure. Um, it is a French style photography where copper plates actually chemically etch an image into a canvas. And um, he had those sitting in a gallery in New York because he started, you know, sussing out Ben Dome and, and copper pot stills. And those were like mm -hmm. fifty to $60,000, um, you know, and, and so he was like, well, my wife's going to kill me if I spend that much money when I don't <laughs> know really how to steep tea at this point. He taught him right. everything, such a self-made man, you know. So he called New York, the gallery they're in. He's like, hey, I'm going to need those copper plates back. I don't really know what y'all are doing with them. But uh, <laughs> got them back to the Springs and worked with someone to tinker and create his first copper pot still by himself. 
And um, that copper pot still is uh, only 45 gallons. So it is now used as our thump keg. Um, you know, all of our liquids still see it by the third distillation, which I think is amazing. But if you're in the distillery and you kind of look around it, um, you can still see the images that were chemically etched in the copper plates. And um, it, it's beautiful. It's a cool process. So that kind of just gives a little bit of light into Michael and how creative he is and his passion. Um, it's 100% grain to barrel to bottle and, and, you know, hard made the Colorado way, which is, it kind of resonates with me because I'm a Colorado native. Um, so, you know, we kind of have that in common. <laughs> There's something in the water. I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, yeah. yeah. That's, so a, that's my- a cool story. And like an original story who goes from a photographer to a distiller. Like he has a great story. Seriously, And his passion, I mean, it permeates the rest of the team. It's so funny. He'll, he does these morning hikes, right? And he goes on these hikes for a little bit and then comes back to the distillery and he has these like brilliant ideas that he gathers from these hikes and the executive team, mind you, there's only five of us. Um, we get to hear these brilliant ideas first and it's kind of like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna write that down and see what we can do. And it, you know, <laughs> is they always come to fruition. Like he has right. this magic way about him, you know? So he's wonderful to work for. And I could not be happier that COVID uh, landed me here with 291. So that's awesome. So speaking of COVID, you're finally getting back to traveling and what markets are you hoping to get into this year? You know, so we are hoping, uh, we kind of have a full schedule tentatively laid out. We will be traveling two weeks out of every month through September. And I think we're gone through the entire month of August from Colorado. So we (laughs) will, our next step is Kentucky. We'll actually be in uh, Louisville, Mr. Bill. Um, so, uh, we're going to be paying attention to that market and, and having a good time there. We'll also be in Oregon, our first control state that we opened over the past few weeks. Um, we will be visiting Arkansas, um, Texas again, California, Florida. Um, what else? And I think that might be it right now. Um, but we're also launching international business. We just secured placement in Alberta and British Columbia and Canada. And then we are uh, in constant conversation with our EU partners as well about growing our presence there. So really That's opportunities are endless. <laughs> super exciting. You guys are going to be everywhere soon. We are. Um, yep. 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 So my next question is going to be like asking someone if they have a favorite child, but do you have a favorite product from the lineup that we were sent? Oh my goodness. I do. Um, you know, I was so quick to say that I didn't have to yeah. think about it. But, um, <laughs> you had no reservations at all. <laughs> no reservations. You know, I say that all the time when I taste people on the whole line and my favorite is really the barrel proof bourbon It is, you know, if I could describe it, um, uh, kind of appealing to a uh, you know female feminine audience I think that that's mm-hmm. kind of my duty being brought onto this executive team as well uh, is bringing whiskey to women and I think that the barrel proof bourbon really kind of sums up um, the power of females in general um, mm-hmm. it sounds funny but it's big bold and beautiful on the palate but like middle palate it has this finesse that you're kind of intimidated by but you want to know more. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. It's 128 to 130 proof. And I'm excited for y'all to try it. It is, it's amazing. And we actually just won double gold from the San Francisco uh, spirits competition last week with our barrel proof bourbon. So. Congrats. That's exciting. That's a big one. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, um, I have a question in the group from Randy. What's the significance of the name 291? So this is my favorite, one of my favorite stories to tell um, because it, it resonates with me. But Michael Myers, when he was at SCAD, his dorm room number was 291. Um, and then he took his first photo history class. And in learning about photography and all of that, he learned um, about Alfred Stieglitz, who was the boyfriend of Georgia O'Keeffe, another famous artist. Mm-hmm. Alfred actually opened the first pho- uh, photography gallery in New York, um, and it was called 291. So in that moment of that photo history class, he was like, okay, I'm on the right path. Um, Michael is very into manifestation and serendipity and really um, honing in on things that happen for a reason. So that's kind of how it connects. And he took that creativity from his photography career into making whiskey. And now it's on all of our labels. So. Oh, that's a cool story. That's fun. Yeah. yeah I love yeah. that. I love that. So I think everybody here is excited to start tasting. And which one did you want to start with? One of these? Uh, please. Yep. So we will look for the uh, fresh Colorado whiskey. It is, my bottles look a little bit different, but um, it is the 90 proof. Okay. It is our bourbon mash bill, which is 80% corn, 
19% malted rye, 1% malted barley. And, you know, I think on initial nose, um, you'll get a lot of agave characteristics, in my opinion. This one. Yeah, it is, smells a lot like tequila, honestly. Oh, yes. And it, it yes. Uh, you know, it's really cool. Recently, I really hope I'm not giving away proprietary information here. But um, <laughs> last week, last week, we actually got a, uh, a cocktail trademarked. Uh, we are one of seven in the United States at this point, and it is called the Whiskerita. So that sounds great. <laughs> it's phenomenal. And Michael has been making them ever since he started and hitting the road and going to different, um, you know, events and things like that. We'll do frozen whiskeritas and it is made with our 291 Colorado fresh because of those agave characteristics. So, um, this one is Aspen, uh, charcoal mellowed. So when we actually char our Aspen, um, we char it with Aspen charcoal, if that makes sense. So it's kind of uh, you know, double the whammy. And so when we're filtering the barrel, we filter it through. And I think that's really, in my opinion, what gives it the smooth, natural texture, despite the, you know, the very much forward agave note that you'll pick up on. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I can't complain, really. It's, you know, all the at 90 proof, it does really, really well in a cocktail, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're kind of going to, uh, you know, the, the white whiskeys we kind of hold on to in Colorado. I mean, it's distributed in a lot of states through our uh, Lib Dib distribution partnership. Um, but when it comes to opening new independent markets like that, um, you know, we, uh, we, we kind of hold that to our chest, but this is like everywhere. Yeah. And um, there's a question in the chat um, from Will. It says, what are the characteristics of the water used from Colorado? You know what, Will? A water in Colorado... <laughs> In uh, characteristics, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I'm sure Eric Judd, our head distiller, would know. But water in Colorado, if I know anything from growing up there, that it is, um, there's a lot of minerality to the water naturally. And whether that affects our whiskey or not could be a huge guess. But I remember being a kid and just like drinking from under the faucet with like no, no issues. And so I think the, the, the natural um, mountain-esque water that imparts like with our whiskey, I think that's a super like important component. Um, but if you're asking for nerdy stuff, I'd have to like phone our head distiller at this point. <laughs> and he'd probably laugh at me, which is fine. Um, but you know. Yeah, well, it's a good question. Cause like we all know water plays a huge sure. part in it and it just tastes super clean. Like fresh Colorado whiskey makes so much sense cause it tastes super fresh in line with the fresh Colorado water. So what's funny mm -hmm. is we like to highlight the fresh Colorado whiskey, um, you know, stemming from snow melt, if you will. That's kind of the idea behind it is the palette that you get is that it is super clean. There is a little bit of minerality to it. And, uh, you know, it will go great in standing in any light bodied cocktail, so. Yeah, does anybody want to share any of their own notes? Like I definitely got that agave, you know, smell and taste. Anybody else get anything different they want to share? You can just unmute yourselves. Well, obviously there's corn in it, but it just smells like <laughs> corn. I mean, it just it smells does. like corn. It just tastes like corn. But it's, <laughs> like my, it's like my Mexican corn whiskey. That's 100% corn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A couple of weeks ago, uh, me and Steve were in Colorado and this kind of tastes like Colorado. <clears throat> I mean, if that makes any sense. No, it does. It absolutely does. I, uh, you know, I think that's why it's easy, easy to equate to snow um, in that way. But uh, yeah, it is. It's very unique in that way. And honestly, you know, that highlights really, we can talk more about it as we get through the rest. But Michael set out to make a Colorado whiskey. You know, we have a lot of respect for Tennessee whiskey and Kentucky bourbon and, and all over. But really, our whiskey is 100% Colorado. It is quintessential Western whiskey, you know, rugged, refined, rebellious. It is not done the way that any other mm -hmm. state does it, in my opinion. I have a question. I kind of put it in the chat, but whichever you smell is like your water source. Um, you have know, an abundance of it. So in, in essence, probably uh, in not directly, simply because of the natural pollution that occurs in metro cities and in, and or in mountain towns, there are a lot of spirits out there that do. They, you know, I, I can't necessarily pick them off the top of my, my head right now, but, um, 
you know, I, I know that they say fresh mountain water, snow melt, things like that, but obviously that comes through purification processes, I'm sure, um, but not so. Okay, what is the next one we're gonna jump into? Yeah, so this kind of uh, steers us in an interesting direction. So we've got the American whiskey. Okay, and this one's also 90 proof. This is what your guys' bottle should look like. So this one has no Aspen treatment. It is our only whiskey that is a second fill. Um, meaning, so once we use our barrels for our bourbon, we uh, harvest those and use it for our American, which is a five month old pre-prohibition style whiskey. Um, very light in body, very palatable for an entry level whiskey drinker in my opinion. Um, so I'm interested to hear everybody's take on it because this is kind of, it, it plays homage to, you know, ideally what the whiskeys were potentially like pre-prohibition and, and it's not in like a very, it's not an egotistical way by any means, but I think the flavor profile, it kind of, you know, calls for that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, newer, fresh, things like that. I don't hate to yeah, say that one's I know super I'm, light. Now, which one are we drinking? So this one will be the American whiskey. It's Aspen Charcoal yeah. Miller. I don't think I have that one. Oh, no. <clears throat> I have a white dog that's 101, and then I have a 90 proof. There's a, this is the 90 proof small batch. And right yeah, this one is right a 90 proof. underneath the letters of the number 291, it says American whiskey. Oh, sorry. My glasses wasn't working. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, everybody should have, I think, nine, nine samples. Eight. Almost eight. eight. Yeah, I eight. can't count. <laughs> my counting skills are always a challenge. But yeah. Listen, my glasses aren't working tonight, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this one, if anybody else does have it, it should look like this. American whiskey right under the 291. All right. And so I love the nose on this. This is awesome. Great, thanks. Randy, you're totally right, honey, on the nose. It's something that mm -hmm. um, Eric Jack calls out every time. It's. Yeah, and, and Dawn said wildflower and fruits. I get that too. Like, it just feels like light and summery. I really like this. Yeah, yeah. light and summery, um, really great on its own. Great in a lighter body. <gasps> um, definitely like a lot of leather notes, in my opinion, too. Um, later on, as you, you get to taste it and smell it and spend more time with it, you'll start to pull out those leather characteristics as well. Yeah, um, Neil and Melanie says uh, reminds of them of uh, white wine, and I totally get that too. See, so I mean, yeah, entry entry level potentially. I you know I think our whole uh, premise and goal here is to um, turn everyone into a two nine one lover. And if I had to piss, pick a whiskey to do that, it would be our American probably. This is good. That's going to be the one for sure. It's you, you mentioned palatable, definitely nice on the palate. Easy, really easy to drink. And so again, this is another one of our whiskeys that isn't necessarily in all markets. It is available e-commerce and things like that. But as we start to open new states, we definitely like to focus on, you know, our flagship, which are both the small batch and both the barrel proof, um, you know, and, and as America or as American starts to infiltrate the market, I think we'll see, um, you know, potentially a new new rollout of pre-prohibition style whiskeys. I mean, if anyone, I, I'd be interested to hear, could compare this whiskey to another whiskey in the market. I, I'm all ears because I'm actually kind of curious. I get that question all the time here or in Denver anyway. Um, and so I, I just can't. I'm like, I don't really know. <laughs> and I drink a lot of whiskey, believe it or not, so. <laughs> I'm not aware of another whiskey that's like this. It's yeah, it almost drinks like a gin, I think, like with the florals in it and all the different flavors. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely like a gin. Um, Will, I see your your note for Bren. I love Bren. I, there's a lot of banana characteristics in Bren, I think. And um, it's a that's a light-bodied comparison that I enjoy for sure. How long how long is this little barrel? This is only five months. It's our little baby of the, the line, you know, and it, it packs so much flavor when it sits in that second fill barrel. 
Um, you know, it's uh, alligator char, like level three, roughly, so we're kind of middle of the road when it comes to comes to chars, and we're using um, you know ten gallon barrels, so it spends a lot of intimate time, I think. With this, the this is your bourbon mash bill. Uh, yes, it is. Um, Boot Hill in uh, Dodge City has a um, red eye whiskey. Okay. Which is six six months in a, in a in a used barrel, and it's their okay. bourbon mash bill. Oh, that's awesome! I'll have to look that up. That's amazing. <clears throat> Okay, which is the uh, next one we're moving on to? So I would move on to the small batch bourbon, please. Is it the 101.7 proof? No, that'll be the rye, but it'll be that okay. one proof bourbon. Again, sorry, my bottles look different. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get it. Okay, 100 proof small batch. Mm -hmm. All right, this is what we're about, our bottle should look like, guys. And so this one again is 80% corn, 19% malted rye, 1% malted barley. And, you know, uh, the malting, if anyone knows how that process, I mean, you all probably know how that process works, but the she froze uh, so she froze, so she's sweeter component, so. Right, um, and look at that color, that's beautiful. Yes, it is. I love that. How long is this aged? So um, our small batches uh, range from uh, 12 to 24 months in our 10 gallon barrels. Okay. Um, Virgin American white oak, of course, uh, you know, and so when it's the small batch, once it's ready to harvest, we actually harvest in a vat. And when they're all together, that's when we throw in the aspen staves. So the charred aspen staves are going to give you, um, you know, again, fuller bodied, in my opinion, sometimes an herbal characteristic more often than not. Um, and what's really great is the, the Aspen saves, the charring of them is the most sought after job in the distillery, in my opinion, um, simply because you've got this beautiful view of Pike's Peak, right? And uh, you see all the distillers that go out there and get assigned that job and they're working on a, a, a Weber grill with Aspen charcoal and they're charring the staves from, you know, uh, fresh staves to toasted staves and get to listen to music. It's really like a romantic kind of job. I don't know. I love it. I really want to go out there and do it, but they never let me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why? But it's amazing. It's for sure amazing. Um, and so the Aspen staves for about three weeks. And then the distillers start to taste the barrels and, and, and or I'm sorry, and the, uh, in the whiskey in the vat. And then we start from the bottling process. So, yeah, um, Emily in the chat says this is a great nod to uh, Scotch or Irish whiskey, like the short age, that's floral and summery, really great. Yeah, Scott and Kathy, I haven't heard from you guys. What are you thinking? Hello. Um, I like this, the smoky finish on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of some smoke from, it's almost like the, the charring of the aspen stays. It's, it's kind of, it's, it makes it romantic. You did a good <laughs> job. <laughs> Such a funny word to use, but I think I just I, love I watch that and I'm like, oh, you have a full bottle there. there. Oh, they have a whole bottle. Hey, um, I love that. We were at 291 in 2018, and it was a it. fantastic trip. And yeah, the uh, I was so excited to see it on the shelf in uh, Kentucky. So when we stopped by over there, we've tried to pick up a bottle, and it's just so unique. And this is the 100 proof single barrel, um, the cask strength is even better, um, but the 100 proof is fantastic, so. Great, thank you, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you guys made it by. So you guys were in our 6,000 square foot distillery then is my guess. Yeah, um, yeah it was small. Okay, so it was small. And then, you know, from that, we actually just moved to 12,000 square feet. Oh, wow. And by the end of the year, we'll, we'll take over the whole building with where we're at. And it's about 24,000 square feet. So, um, you know, production levels on the four main SKUs, which are both our small batch and our barrel proof, will double from last year to this year due to demand, which I think is really remarkable. I feel like I'm joining the company at the right time. But um, we just added four new fermentation tanks. Um, mm -hmm. Michael uh, reconstructed his original idea of his still, too. So it's really adding these cool new um, and or familiar flavors that were originally once in the whiskey as well. So we're all very thrilled with what's coming off. 
So you've mentioned you're in 10 gallon um, barrels right now. Is there any move to bigger or are you sticking with that? So 10 gallon barrels, obviously, you know, being an emerging brand, I think Michael definitely understands the cash flow purpose, um, sure. of, you know, intimate time with a barrel, lesser amount of time, quicker turnover. But when it comes to obviously like larger barrels, we want to have uh, longer age statements on our whiskey. And we have put some things in 53 gallons. We are working with 15 gallon barrels. So I'm very excited to see um, what comes of it over the next, you know, few years. And uh, so yeah, we, we definitely will make the move. I don't know if we'll make the move entirely, um, simply because we're hard made the Colorado way and, and we like to do, do it uh, by Michael's process, as you know. So yeah. And he's doing a great job. Like, I don't think he should change anything right now. <laughs> yeah, girl, I think he feels the same way. <laughs> and so do I, honestly. So well, it'll change everything a little bit too, because you're going to get different wood, you know, intensity and notes, just the way you're doing them in 10 gallon barrels. I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll change the product. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think slow and steady is our a thought process behind that. We don't definitely, we don't want to pull the rug out from anyone who, you know, is a huge 291 fanatic, which, you know, I'm hoping a lot of us are after this call, but, um, you know, we don't want to change everything so rapidly. I definitely agree with you. Yeah. Like, and it's hitting the perfect, like mix of like floral, sweet, and then spicy on the palate. Like it's, it's a perfect blend of all the flavors you want to have in a whiskey, I think. I'd have to agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the next one we're gonna move on to? All right, we're moving on to my favorite. Um, this is our barrel proof bourbon. This one is fun and it ranges anywhere from 127 proof to 130. So I don't know if your proofs are listed on your bottles, but it could be a surprise. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, I have a single barrel without a proof, but I also have a 125 proof. So the 125 will be the one that you will be the barrel proof. Yeah. Okay. All right, so this one, guys. Just like that. I don't know if it's blurry to you guys, but it looks blurry on my screen. That one says Colorado <laughs> whiskey versus Colorado bourbon whiskey. One more time. Okay, yeah, we have um, our labels say, I have one that says Colorado bourbon whiskey and one that just says Colorado whiskey. Okay, so the Colorado bourbon whiskey is the one that we're moving on to. Okay, Colorado yeah, and it'll say, it says barrel proof on it and it doesn't show us the proof. So this is the one we have. Oh, sure. barrel on say that again? I'm sorry. So which one are we drinking, uh, Steph? Or Tara? Uh, yeah. Uh, so it'll say Colorado Bourbon Whiskey right under that two nine one. Okay. And it it says single barrel bourbon. It doesn't no, give us no a proof, proof on right. this one. Yeah. Okay. No proof. Yep. <clears throat> yep. Make sure everybody gets it. <laughs> I poured it and then I poured it back in the bottle. Whoops. Now I'm pouring it back <laughs> in the glass. Thank you. This is Colorado. Like, no, nope, never mind. We know what yeah, we we're it's it's a Monday. We're all trying to we're all struggling after a work day, so it's all right. <laughs> but is it really Monday? Maybe <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we're excited to try some single barrels, so that's exciting for yes. all of us. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. So this one's my favorite simply because of what I said earlier. Um, you know, it really up front, it's big, bold, and beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. again, our mash bill: eighty percent corn, ninety percent malted rye, one percent malted barley. Um but in the middle palette, it really has this finesse to it that I can't quite put all of the words to. I think mm -hmm. the more you spend time with it, it is very, uh, you know, smooth. It's like it's caramel notes. It's a lot of baking spices. Um, it is not offensive, even when it comes to the proof. That is what always blows my mind because Michael loves this fun game where he comes into the distillery and he's like, hey, uh, will you try this? <laughs> And, you know, I smell it and I try it. And he's like, what proof do you think that is? And so I feel like in all of my whiskey tastings, I, I kind of have some grasp on what we do when it comes to proofing. And he always blind, like blindsides me. You know, I'm like, oh, Michael, it's probably like 130. He's like 147, gotcha. And I think, <laughs> uh, you know, and I think that that's what's really funny about it. And I think it, it just, I think it's what really ties me into our whiskey because it comes from, you know, uh, such small barrels, but the resting time and the, and the speed and the efficiency in which we create this amazing Colorado whiskey, 
um, to be at such high proof is, is pretty remarkable. I don't well, and, and like, that's a testament to like his artistry and his skill, because Absolutely. you can have a high proof and it can be drinkable and enjoyable like this. And then there's others that just punch you in the face and all you get is proof. You lose the flavor. And he's doing a great job of like high proof and flavor, which is what we want. Absolutely. And that's where that word like finesse comes in. There's just, this yeah, absolutely. Issue. And I'm like, oh man, my, I think this is, this is kind of, you know, everybody has their reason for working for 291, right? And mine is mm-hmm. this uh, barrel proof bourbon. Phenomenal. And yes. uh, like I mentioned earlier, the barrel proof bourbon just won double gold with the San Francisco Spirits competition, which we have a lot of stickers on our bottle. Uh, <laughs> you know what that looks like? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have to start making more room on the bottle, but um, you know, it's, we're 100% grain to barrel to bottle. We hand label, hand cork, hand cage. Um, you know, we have, I think 18 employees now, give or take a few um, in our entire operation, which is, you know, I'm still, it's still wild to me. I wake up every day pinching myself. I'm not a part of this amazing team. Um, but to have 18 people doing all of this production, doubling our production year over year and hand stickering our bottle, like, I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's people in the chat, there's a uh, rich and uh, Tony saying like, it has this caramel to it, which it absolutely does. It's great. Amazeballs, Nikki, we love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, it really is. I, yeah, I, I could drink this all the time, except for when I have one or two cocktails or a neat, you know, sometimes it's a, it takes a very specific cocktail to put this in. I have put it in a New York sour, to be honest with you. And mm-hmm. the acid uh, balances out the proof very nicely, but okay. when drinking it neat, um, one or two is, it does me in, to be honest at this proof, but it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> definitely definitely yeah it, it's lovely and like you do want to keep drinking this but at that proof you're gonna be like oh after two you're, you're, you're like wait a minute it's my bedtime and it snuck up on you and it's 5 p.m right. sunday not like that's ever happened yeah. <laughs> yes i would not pollute this with anything else with any other no no yeah. it, it would be no that's a crime that's a crime yeah, absolutely Scott just needs a couple of these and um, he'll be in a special place. <laughs> we can work that out, Scott. I mean, Barrel Proof will soon be coming to Kentucky. So keep uh, keep an eye out. Yeah, we, we have a lot of St. Louis people on here too. Are you guys going to get into the St. Louis market? Um, that's our goal for sure. I think we're, we're slow and steady. And I think we have uh, Philip and I are tackling the, uh, you know, national market international market simultaneously so mm-hmm. um we just opened four new states but we'll we'll definitely be in st louis as soon as we can so. i think there's an amtrak that stops through there runs through kansas city <laughs> to st louis just put a case on the train and we'll see it in like 16 hours okay yeah. just throw it on there have somebody just kick it off the rails they'll collect it it's yeah. fine <laughs> hey, you know what like off the record you know i mean if we can, we'll figure it out for you so funny so, well and you probably <laughs> ship do you ship direct to a few states so what we, states do you ship directly to we actually use bar cart, um online so it's our e-commerce platform so if you if y'all want to look at that i mean we're definitely on there with all of our main SKUs, um, soon to be a lot of our allocations as well will be on bar cart. So um, our straights will come out for Father's Day as well on that online platform, which not a lot of their, not, not a lot of uh, markets see directly. Um, so we focus on Colorado when it comes to our straights and our allocations, but we do everything on the e-commerce, so. Okay. And we have four left. Are we moving on to the rye mash bill? We are super okay. excited for this one. I think I'm super excited for all of them. So I'll stop saying that. We are too. So <laughs> <laughs> they've all been fantastic so far. Good. good. All right. So the rye, the white one, right? Yes. AKA, AKA the, white the, the white dog. The white dog. dog. Yep. So this one again, this is a 101.7 proof similar. It is our small batch uh, proof as well, just in the white dog form. Cause our thought process obviously is if our white whiskeys aren't good, then the rest of our line isn't going to be good. Right. Yeah. And, and that's how a good distillery thinks like you got to put good in to get good out. Like you can't put crap in a barrel and expect the barrel to do all the work. So right. good goes in, good comes out. 
Yep, absolutely. And what's funny is, uh, you know, the white whiskey is kind of what captured our head distiller, if you will. So Michael, uh, when he was, um, you know, pulled off his first still and he went to an event at another Colorado whiskey distillery and, you know, showed off his whiskey and everyone, you know, took a sip of it. And he was super, super nervous. He'll tell the story obviously way better than I would, but he was nervous to showcase this whiskey to a lot of experts and they tried it and they were, I mean, blown away by the white whiskey. And so, um, you know, at the time, Eric Jett, our head distiller was working for another company. And, and three years later, Eric was like, I want to be on your team, man. Like, let me be your head distiller. And he's still our head distiller about 10 years later. So, yeah. Nice. So the white, uh, sorry, our rye mash will be 61% uh, rye, 39% corn. And you can tell the corn influence in there. Like, it's not like the spicy, spicy rye. It's super smooth. Sure. Oh, that is so nice. So, um, you know, this one, this one's a barrel for, ooh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying that, that is I'm so- I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Which one was it? And my connection went bad. Which one are we talking? Oh, yeah, sorry. this one. Um, it's the other white one. Bridge, go ahead. No, just saying that that is so nice. It's sweeter than I actually expected, honestly. It, has it a is sweeter, a sweeter finish. I have the corn in there for sure. Corn in there for sure. Um, our rye we currently get from Germany, but our corn we get from uh, Root Shoot in uh, Loveland, Colorado. Okay. So, are would you say a majority of the ingredients you have are from Colorado? Um, I will say, yeah, so when it comes to the grain, uh, we do obviously as much local sourcing as possible mm -hmm. um, because we think that's important. Obviously being a Colorado awesome. whiskey, again, quintessential Western whiskey, um, Michael wanted to have Colorado be showcased in a bottle as much as possible, so. That's fantastic, that's cool. Yep, and we, I mean, uh, you know, we mill, we mash, uh, we, we ferment, we still, we strip, we bottle, we, I mean, everything we do in house with 18 employees, which is still blows my mind. So. Love that. Very cool. And, and this product lineup, you guys have a pretty <clears throat> huge product lineup for 18 employees. It's impressive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. They, uh, you know, I, I definitely can only take credit from where it goes from here. I, I think that's, it's just plays such a big part in why I'm so proud to be on the 291 team is, is because of all the work leading up to this point and, and just taking it and exponentially growing it from here. It's the, it's a labor of love. I mean, everyone who loves whiskey knows that it takes time. It takes patience. It takes thoughtfulness. It takes, you know, predicting what's going to come out of the barrel, you know, two years from now. I mean, it's just a really amazing process to be a part of. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right, what is the next one we're gonna try? Is it the small batch? Yes, we'll, we'll move on to the small batch, right? Okay. Looks like this. It's the 101.7 uh, proof. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, same mash bill. This bad boy won American, uh, Best American Rye in 2016 and World Best Rye in 2018 from World Whiskey Awards. So uh, again, stickers on the bottle. Yeah, I was gonna so say he has some stickers too. <laughs> he so much to us um, simply because we're, we're continuing to get these accolades. Um, and, and this one is very, uh, this one is a favorite. The rye mash bill is a favorite. Um, you know, only being a two grain rye, I think is pretty, uh, you know, amazing. Um, and cause we're seeing a lot that come out that's, you know, four grain and, and so on, which are beautiful and have its place. But I think Michael, these are his original recipes. So he made his recipes and stuck with it. There hasn't been any alterations. So in 10 years. Wow. And it smells amazing. Again, a lot of baking spices, you know, I think when you're mm -hmm. looking at a rye, you're kind of feeling that heat or tasting that heat or smelling that heat. But when it comes to the spicy level, it's definitely baking spice forward. Definitely yeah, absolutely. For sure, Randy, brown sugar all the way. Um, what's funny is, uh, you know, brown sugar is a lot of notes that I use to describe our whiskey. And when I'm writing them down, um, you know, Eric's like, okay, so what else from brown sugar? I love it. It totally hits, it hits a nail on the head mm -hmm. with our rye for sure. Um, I love it. 
Yeah. Um, Justine, what do you think? Like, I think Justine has a great palette. Like she's worked really hard on it. So I want to hear her thoughts on it. Um, I'm definitely getting the brown sugar on the nose. And then I get a little bit, um, actually pretty consistently. And I've been trying to drink water in between each one, but um, I'm getting a little smoke on this one too. So I'm assuming it's probably like the char. Yep. It's a good, it's a good smoke. But yeah, these are all excellent. Thank you. We appreciate it so much. You know, I think we they, we definitely put the love into it. And the char, you're totally right. Smoke, um, both on your front palate and your back palate. Um, the small batches are what we like to see in a lot of cocktails. Uh, Black Manhattan is one of Michael's favorites. I highly recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to the small batch bourbon, we can circle back. But a bourbon and lemonade, honestly kills it. It is such an easy sipper mm -hmm. that again, it's dangerous, kind of like the bourbon barrel proof, but. I make those every Friday. That's what I make for my girls every yeah, Friday. Yes. Every Friday. Okay, yes. so I'm gonna come to your house. You just let me know when. Every Friday, Southern California, <laughs> every Friday. You just, we'll just go to California on Fridays. Yes. Uh, yes. Have cocktails with Vicky, it sounds and great. <laughs> here's, here's what I do. So if I'm feeling extra fancy, I will flavor my lemonade. And all you have to do is take like a cup of the lemonade and throw it in the blender with a basket of strawberries, a basket of blueberries, a basket of blackberries, just pick one. So you've got blackberry lemonade, strawberry lemonade. And so my cocktail is bourbon, Amaro Montenegro, mint or mint tincture and house made lemonade. Cause I do it with monk fruit. So it's no sugar. So that way you don't all feel like crap the next day. Yes, that's lovely. Every week, every week, every week. <laughs> every week. Where have you been my oh whole my life? Goodness. I love that's my gosh. Lovely. Seriously, bourbon lemonades, that's what I call them. And my friends' uh, parents just sold their property. They've been sending bushels of Meyer lemons. So I've been making, I still have like, I don't know, 10, 15 pounds of lemons in the fridge. So I know I've got like another month of bourbon lemonades before I have to buy yes, them. Yes, I love it. I, I've been into, I call them like dirty Palmers. So it's lemonade and sweet tea with bourbon, like the Arnold Palmers, but you throw yeah. some bourbon in. My favorite yeah. summer drink. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's amazing. I love it. Okay, good. So yeah, we didn't trademark that one. Vicky did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Vicky lives her best life on Fridays. <laughs> yes, yes. That's so amazing. And, you know, so with our whiskey too, we, uh, we cut really slow. Um, and I think, you know, to play ode to, uh, you know, Justin, Justine's note about the whiskey is that you'll pick up more of those esters. And I think it's, it's slower and it's smooth and it's, you know, I, I feel like it's, uh, uh, if you tasted 291 in a lineup of whiskey, you know it's our whiskey because of how slow we cut and the process that we use, so. Yeah, Paul, you usually have like good opinions. What are you thinking? I really like this. Um, the sweet for rye, but I mean, it's got all the good rye spices that you want to find and yeah, no, I'm, I really like everything so far tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, what's the next one? We have a single barrel or a 125 proof. Ooh, I'm interested to see. Okay, so we should be moving on to the uh, Colorado whiskey. Um, so <laughs> like, we have the barrel, barrel. Not, the, not the single barrel, right? Yeah, they both yeah. say Colorado they both whiskey. They both say. So um, it is, I think, I think is we have some single barrel rye. Yes, the single barrel rye. Okay. Single barrel. Okay, that's it's. That okay. doesn't say Colorado whiskey on it, though. Yes, it does. It it does. does. Oh, they both say Colorado whiskey. Oh, no. I, I sit small. corrected. It's very small. Yep, so this one. Okay. Um, so again, our rye mash bill. Um, barrel proof rye. This is Colorado whiskey. And, you know, on the full size bottles, uh, it just says Colorado whiskey in big bold font. And then underneath it, it'll highlight that it's a rye. And I think, I mean, I know the reason behind it is this is Michael's flagship. This is the image of, you know, his Western whiskey. You walk into an old timey saloon and you call the bartender for a shot of whiskey and they slam down that beautiful tall bottle that is corked and caged and very you know, antique-esque. And so it, he wants everyone to taste that in this whiskey. 
And um, I think it's really, really easy to do. Again, ranging from that 127 to 130 proof. Um, hard to tell, but it's true. So. Yeah. Sorry, what proof did you say this was? Um, so uh, right now we're pulling it off at around 128 pretty consistently, okay. but it could go up to 120 or I'm sorry, 130. And it doesn't drink like that proof. It's so good. Not at all. That's not at all what I expected. It's so funny. We, um, you know, in Houston today, we've been, we've been tasting with on premise with restaurants and bars. And when we put down the bottle and, and we tasted this proof, um, you know, you can't really quite see it on the bottle and they're like, oh, this is great. And I'm like, yeah, it's 128 proof. And I think their face just goes, <laughs> taste. and That's I like a mind it. blown moment for it anybody is. tasting it. <laughs> it is. It's like surprise. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, and, and being in Colorado at higher altitude, higher altitude than Denver, um, you know, obviously evaporation happens a lot quicker, which is where we get these proofs from. So it really mm -hmm. keeps a lot of time and attention to monitor the proof that it comes out at. Um, and the boys do a great job. I mean, you know, I, I definitely could not, uh, you know, court these barrels as amazingly as they do. So to make it sure it comes out at this proof. So. It's still so much flavor. Like this one really does taste like a rye. It has like that rye spice in it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, we baking notes, um, but moving forward from that, I think if you, you know, get into the deeper side of it, it's very tobacco, very leather, mm -hmm. very, um, you know, uh, it's spicy. This is one of our whiskeys that actually is spicy to me. Um, the rest of the lineup isn't so much, um, but obviously every great lineup needs one and it's spicy in the right way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this one, this one I think is probably the most complex too. I mean, it's, but it's really, really good. Thank you. I'd have to, I'd have to agree with you. And I think that Michael would agree with you as well. Um, you know, he, uh, again, his, his idea of whiskey is in this bottle. And so he wanted it to be complex and deep and have people, you know, have that, you know, cathartic experience with whiskey and the whiskey that he created from Colorado specifically. So thank you. Yeah, it, it has a little bit of that Kentucky hug to it. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. We all need that Kentucky hug sometimes. Yeah, the finish is actually very enjoyable. Like, I, I mean, I'm not saying the other finishes weren't good, but this one definitely makes me th know that I'm drinking a rye, which is good for me. I love a rye. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and yeah, you're right. And you can still, you know, um, uh, taste notes and actually gets more complex as you drink it. And the more time you spend with it, you'll pull out weird, like cool, intricate things. There's a lot of times that I actually get vegetal characteristics with this. I don't like to lead with that because I don't want to skew anybody, but when it comes to it, there's very, um, you know, uh, a green pepper aspect for me or a spicy green pepper aspect as you let it sit and as you sip on it more and more, which is, you know, uh, Eric, I think we were tasting one time and he was like, you pulled that out. Like it was, it was a very, <laughs> cool, very cool moment for all of us. And I was like, yeah, I, I pulled that out. Like, <laughs> you know, and it was, it was fun, especially Justine knowing, you know, working on your palate is, uh, is very interesting. And, mm -hmm. you know, I come from the wine world, uh, believe it or not into whiskey when it comes to tasting. And so translating mm -hmm. that knowledge into whiskey has been a very fun journey for me. Um, and it's where the palate kind of expands. So I'm glad y'all agree. Glad we're on the same page. I'm doing something right. Yeah. And, well, and and to me, yeah, sorry. It's, it's like a sweet root vegetable, yes. really. Yes. You know, it's like a yeah. sweet root. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the yeah, right amount this, of sweetness. Yeah. And it has like that, that rustic thing, like you were saying, like the old West, like it feels like a cowboy whiskey almost. Definitely, definitely a Western whiskey. You can kind of picture it now. And what's really cool is going back to Michael's original uh, copper pot still, the images that are etched on the still, um, you've got rolling plains and beautiful mountains and it's just, it, it you know, uh, puts it all together and like it ties it up with a little bow, I think with this whiskey, so. Yeah, with, absolutely. All of our whiskey, again, still sees that final, his original still, which I think is pretty amazing, so. Are, are, are you saying that you, you're picking up a, a bell pepper? I am. Yeah. I pretty, okay. yeah, yeah. Pretty frequently I do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, it's, it's deeper into the whiskey and it's, it's hanging out with it. It's not just sipping and tasting. I think it's, 
uh, long term. I, I can't say that I get it right now, but if I'm smelling it and tasting it and taking a breath and kind of doing my whole process mm-hmm. that I do when I taste a lot of whiskey, um, especially when I taste with the distillers, right. is you know pretty pretty uh, intimate and intense and lengthy. Um, and those are the notes that I get on this one. But what color, bell pepper? Definitely a green pepper. I'm going to say green, <laughs> maybe not even so ripe. Like it's, it's a big difference. difference. <laughs> it's a huge difference. I agree. You know, what's funny is people don't think there's a difference. There is. Um, there's definitely a difference. <laughs> yeah, everyone who tastes whiskey and or anything else knows there's a difference between red, yellow, and green for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was doing a tasting last night for um, a deer hammer out of Colorado too. Yeah. And- I got a, like a um, one of the tasting notes I I said was a grilled green pepper, and now that you say that, like I'm kind of getting like similar like off of this. Mm-hmm. One too. Right. Yeah, and the grilled makes the difference too. Like the grilled flavor is different than like the raw flavor. Yeah, it just totally. seriously, it's just weird to like think, oh, I get a green pepper taste out of a whiskey. So <laughs> I totally get what you're saying. <laughs> totally. Thank you. That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we, we do get excited about like weird tasting notes around here. Like people have said juicy fruit and like all bubble kinds gum. of off the wall bubble gum, <laughs> like off the wall things. We love that because like, yeah, yeah, it's probably there and we probably haven't personally thought of it. So it's great. Like, I love these panels because I'm like, oh, you said that. And now it makes sense. Like you, you can almost we see missing. a light bulb going off above somebody's head when somebody yes. says, something. oh, yeah. yeah. I love it when people throw out random yeah. things. I'm like, yeah, that, that was it. And I had no idea that's what it was. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, bubblegum actually, uh, Eric Jett, our head distiller, notes our bourbon to have bubblegum mm-hmm. characteristics as, as well. So if you want to revisit that and, and see how that goes. But um, it's it's kind of the best feeling when you guys, and when everybody can, uh, you know, compare their palates. I think everyone learns more in that. And everyone has their own journey with whiskey, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, deep coming from wine, I don't sit here in front of everyone, assuming that I know all there is to know about all the whiskey ever. Um, I think everyone has their own journey and process when it comes to learning their palate. And when it comes to uh, tasting through wines and finding their preferences. It's, you know, it's just uh, 291 has our journey in the way that we create whiskey and everyone has their journey in the way that they receive it as well. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's jump into this last one. It is the uh, Barrel Proof 125 that we all have. And like these copper collars on these, like it's a beautiful colored whiskey. Like every pour has been just amazing. Thank you so much. Nothing is, you know, I think we all hear stories and and rumors and things like nothing's added in our whiskey. It is 100% parted from the barrel. So. Tons of spice. Mm -hmm. Very spicy. You were talking about your, you know, everybody's journey is different. Um, I grew up around horses. And so I remember going to feed the horses and periodically we'd give them feet, sweet feed. And there was a bourbon that we tasted a couple of weeks ago that to me tasted and smelled like the sweet feed in a very good, very awesome memory, you know, flashback. And, and it was, it was I don't know that anybody else recognized that, but it was pretty good. Funny. That's awesome. You know, you and Michael have that in common. He he grew up around uh, his family, uh, boarded and, and raised walking horses, and, and did all of that in between Tennessee and Georgia. And so I'm sure that he has the right. similar nostalgia. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it's it's always something. It's always beautiful when you can. Uh, take a memory and share mm-hmm. it with an experience that you had and then you know it brings up so many other things for you it's kind of our goal with restaurants and bars and hotels and people who go out to have cocktails and taste our whiskey at a bar they're always there with someone that they like I hope uh, <laughs> they really enjoy and uh, they're trying our whiskey for the first time and they're having a great interaction and then it you know there's that light bulb again of oh wow I've tasted this before it's familiar to me mm-hmm. and then they find mm-hmm. it in uh in in liquor stores and, and around and off-premise as well so 
Yeah, and Emily just mentioned in the chat, like flavor is memory and it absolutely is because right. there'll be people that be like, that's like my grandma's Christmas candy or my mom's apple pie or whatever. And it brings back so many good memories for people. And it's great that whiskey does that. Absolutely, absolutely. It's funny though, white dog was like that super fine spun sugar. And I don't know if they, they'll wrap it around like Japanese candies and things, but it's super fine. So specific that really like hair, fine spun sugar. I mean, it was, yeah, knocking me out like that. Funny. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love it. I love hearing everybody's tasting notes. It, it really honestly makes me better. And it also, um, it makes me realize that our whiskey is so multifaceted, uh, cause I taste it every day. Um, you know, different, different proofs every day, different styles every day, different thought process behind it. And, uh, you know, you all kind of tie it together for me. So it's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Don, I would love to hear your thoughts on this one or any others too. <laughs> Careful, Will. Hmm. <laughs> 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 Kevin, you're a cocktail guy. Um, so I know you know flavors. What are you thinking? Uh, for me, what? And just in general or this one? Yeah, specific? just this one or just in general. What's one of your favorites? Uh, my favorite probably was like her, the uh, barrel proof. Um, mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. I didn't have to. I didn't taste the, uh, what do you call it there? The white dog rye. Because for some odd reason, there's some glass in my bottle. So, oh, I didn't try that. oh. yeah, Steve, me and Justine think Steve did the sample. So, Steve, <laughs> he gave me some extra. Steve gave me some extra. So, I didn't try that. Okay. Um, but I like them. Um, but for me, as she said, the Colorado uh, waters naturally, minerally minerally is not kind of my flavor profile and my wheelhouse so some of the lower proofs i didn't care for as much as the higher proofs um you can put those in a cocktail i'm sure lots of people like the i went that vicky girl i'm going lady not girl i'm going why is she not in the cocktail contest she's <laughs> making all stuff. She doesn't get in our cocktail contest <laughs> why is she not in these contests because she named a whole lot of flavors and profiles and things there so I'm like, why is she not doing it? But hey, everybody doesn't have time for it. I just need to be invited. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna email you a personal invite, get in our cocktail contest. They're yeah. fun every month. Nice, nice. Yeah, the but the the higher proofs, I really like them because for me, it takes down that mineral aspect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Anybody yeah. else want to jump in and share some thoughts? Like just over the whole collection, like we've tasted eight. They've all been wonderful for me. Um, anybody want to share some specific notes? Well, I got one quick question for the, mm -hmm. I don't know, you guys do tastings at the distillery? We are, do. Mm -hmm. Are they this large? Oh yeah, absolutely. We definitely do a full line of tastings every time. We make sure everyone has an Uber as well. Well, <laughs> well, the important probably part. need them yeah absolutely absolutely yeah yep yeah, absolutely so um we want to thank hannah for her time walking us through all these wonderful whiskeys thank you so right. much and all of her knowledge behind them thank you oh thank you for having me it was so so wonderful before i go mcnew i have a question for you yeah which one was your favorite Oh my gosh. Um, honestly, that like barrel proof bourbon was just yeah. spot on. Like, like you said, it's like a lady, like it's robust and then it's like finesse. It's, it's like the perfect whiskey, honestly. Great. I'm so glad you guys, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm, it was great Good to time. see your faces and, and to meet all of you. Thank you. Uh, I look forward to being in your market soon. So, um, you know, if, if you guys have any questions, we're always here. So. Yeah. Hannah, when you is there Will you give McNew your schedule when you know where you're going to be so she can yeah. send that to ABV and we can meet up with you? Yeah, oh, yeah. We, <laughs> this would love we'll to meet it. you when you're in Louisville, especially, or St. Yeah. Louis. I'm an ND. Let us know. Great. Well, Absolutely. and I'm sure you're on social media. Like, we could follow you and see what events you're hosting, right? Yes, yes. I am on Instagram at the Whiskey Miss. 
uh, the underscore whiskey underscore miss and also at distillery 291. Please give us a follow. Um, we, we try to post and share everything that we're doing in all of our markets and we would love to meet you. So, you know what? I just realized the barrel proof rye. I think I need a bottle to really get the full. full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really need a bottle. I don't, this little one else is not doing it. I think I need a different. Uh, I think you do too. Well, larger sample, larger sample. Yeah. 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 Great, amazing. Justine typically needs like a two ounce, right? Yeah, I need to get on a plane and just do a tour of everybody. Who needs to go all the way to Kentucky from California? I'll just go to Colorado. Please, I, I, you I would love to have you. I am down for Colorado. Let's go. Yeah, but you yeah. don't have to okay, stop tomorrow. in Colorado though. It's true. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, thank y'all for your time. I'm going to go see some more restaurants in Houston and uh, hopefully we'll all be in touch soon. Thank you very much. All right, great. Thank Thanks you, so Hannah. much, Hannah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.